to refer to the next phase of her life as my next life unknown. I had to play that again and again to figure out what she had said. My next life, as I go on to my next life unknown. Wow. Let me tell you about public speaking. It's a series of button pushing, sloganism, seed planting. Some people in the room know what my next life unknown means, and other people in the room have never heard it, but when they hear it again, it's going to have a nice familiar ring to it. It is a metaphysical phrase that refers to reincarnation. Fascinating. But it also applies to our life here. Each phase, every day we're reincarnated. Every day we're resurrected into our new glorious God life. Let's just take everything from everything and apply it to what sells my books, what sells my cassettes, what makes me a star on TV and on the motivational speaking circuit. It really doesn't matter if it's true because I'm helping people. I gave you a car, damn it. <laughs> wow. She says, I will never forget this manifestation of grace in God. We already know what grace and God are, by the way. And this, she's referring to, is the people in TV land. Mwah, be nothing without you. From you, whose names I'll never know, I learned what love is. God, that sounds so nice. It sounds so nice, you know? I know we'll never meet. And I know we may never talk. I may mean, never know your name. But I know you're out there. And you listen to my sermons. And you pray for me. And sometimes you send me letters. Sometimes you buy my songs on iTunes. You've taught me what love is. Sorry guys, but... Anybody who knows me knows how much I appreciate anybody that's given me a moment of their time to listen to what I'm talking about. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows at the end of the day I have to go home with me. And I have to face me and I have to face who I am and what I think and what I feel and what I've done in the face of the true and living God who, by the way, is the one who taught me what love is. He taught me what love is. He showed me what love looks like through the amazing people that have come into my life. He taught me through amazing people. But people come and go. And strangers who watch you come and go. Especially when you stop after 25 years, Oprah. Well, she was just being nice. Uh -oh. You can believe that all you want. I'm done. She said, you and this show have been the great love of my life. Please, it was so good once. I want to go back. You and this show have been the great love of my life. I'm doing good, huh, Stedman? Nice. But that felt good. But that felt really good. Seriously. There were, there were people in that room that had been next to her. Serving her dream. It's okay. But then again, the press goes crazy if uh, Hillary Swank wins an Oscar for Best actor, best actress, and forgets to thank her husband. 
They catch that stuff all the time. People forget to thank their spouses when they get awards. It's a big faux pas. And that means it's a big, rude, awful thing to do. And they're going to hate you for life because you did it, no matter how much you apologize tomorrow in the trades. Let's talk about the great love of her life. Um, I hate to break it to you, it's not God, and it's not Stedman. It's probably Gail. And the only reason I bring up Stedman and Gail is simply in response to my Christian brethren who saw the same thing I saw and are rallying around, jumping up and down, because a crumb fell off Oprah's table that kind of looked like God of some sort. Every day before I come out here, I give a prayer of gratitude. Prayer of gratitude. What is that? Watch one of the uh, Madonna documentaries to see the prayer that they do before they go on stage. Gather around in a circle. We're going to pray now. Join hands. I'm going to do good out there. I'm going to do my best. I'm going to sing great. I'm going to dance great. And none of the equipment's going to break. Amen. Group applause. Everyone put your hand and go, Team Madonna. That's prayer. No wonder why they don't let it in school. It's noisy. And meaningless. Prayer of gratitude. Let me tell you about gratitude. Gratitude is one of the most powerful things a human being can feel. It's true. In metaphysics, Gratitude is the stuff that activates everything else. So get a gratitude journal, says Oprah. That came right out of Shirley MacLaine. Get a gratitude journal. Every time you operate in gratitude, you move energy faster. You bring more positive energy your way. So before I go on stage, I give a prayer of gratitude has nothing to do with God. And obviously it has nothing to do with Christ crucified. Before I came out tonight, I was like, God, please don't let me screw this up. <laughs> please don't let me, please don't let this be the worst thing I ever did. Please, please let me glorify you. Please let me say everything you gave me to say. Please, please, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to move energy. And I won't have any energy, by the way, when I'm done. I will be tired. I will be depleted. And I'm expecting nothing positive to come my way for what I'm doing. Nothing. I'm not thinking about what negative is going to come my way, but I could care less. One way or the other. I'm giving the word God gave me to give. She threw in Star Wars, and then she said, I've been on this yellow brick road of blessings. I love that. The yellow brick road led to a charlatan. I love that. We're on this yellow brick road to a charlatan. I will tell you one thing in this life. The calculation of that one statement will become legendary. No one will talk about it for a while, but one day that clip, that, that phrase will come to pass as being one of the most shocking and telling truths in human history. So, as I come to an end, she says, not Paisley, sorry. I will not say goodbye. I will say till we meet again. Oh, I forgot. To God be the glory. And walks off. Want to see it in slow motion? 
Me, 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 oh, me, 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 me. God be the glory. Goodbye. Paisley, you are so mean. Yep. Yep. I am. I'm really mean. I became a Christian in 1982, and I was friends with some of the most famous or soon to be famous Christians in pop Christian history. I would say, to my knowledge, less than 1% of us are still Christians. That makes me mad. I think that that the whole world watched the Oprah Winfrey show, and when Christians started watching the Oprah Winfrey show, it became their fix, their motivation, their self self-help for the day. And gradually, these philosophies entered into the mindset of modern Christianity. How many ministers that used to be all on fire for evangelism are now positive thinking or prosperity ministers? I think our acceptance of these philosophies have rendered us impotent because we're afraid to step on toes I contacted a coffee house yesterday, the one down the street, and uh, they've never seen me. They've never seen me. And look how presentable I am tonight. They've never seen me. And anyone who's ever been to a coffee house shows, show knows how well I am capable of behaving, especially the first time <laughs> when I want them to invite me back. So I called and I said, you know, you're, you're booking a lot of people I know, who you know, Matt Beam. I just noted the names and I was like, you know, they're booking these Christian guys. So I contacted and I said, you know, I, yeah, I'd like to send you an email and tell you, show you what I do. And you know what my big concern is. My big concern is, is they're going to go and find pictures of me gallivanting around in a dress, you know, saying things like spreading butter on her legs and dropping F-bombs while I'm preaching and say, hell no, you're going to drive out our customers. And, you know, they were like, well, we'd like you just to come in and do open mic. And I say, well, I do over 200 shows a year. I don't do open mic, but I have, I'll send, I'll give you one of my 12 records and you can watch one of my thousand videos. You know, I, I kind of threw my Paisley weight around, um, showing my age and maturity all at once. And I said, okay, well, that's fine. That's good. And um, they picked up on the fact that I was a Christian. They go, well, we're a Christian. I'm a Christian, and the co-owner of this coffee house is a church. And I was like, well, okay. And I was like, they're going to hate me. <laughs> you know, that's not going to serve me here. The only thing that would serve me is if they're like ex-hippies who still, you know, their minds haven't healed from all the acid. But the fact that they're Christian is going to work against me because I'm, I'm such a rogue, maverick kind of guy. And he said, you're not real Christian, are you? I said, I'm not a what? He goes, well, you're not going to do like all Christian songs because we had someone performing here the other night and they did a couple Christian songs and when they got to them, people started walking out and we swore when we opened this place we weren't going to have Christian music here because we, we want to have a business. I said, uh, you, we're really not going to work. We're really not going to work because I will accidentally open my mouth and if I don't, the other stuff that I do is freaky, scary, and offensive. I'll, you'll hate me as a Christian, and you'll hate me as a lousy Christian that wants to pack your coffee house and isn't smart enough to know if you had great Christian music, which, by the way, I know I wouldn't be included in, but if you had great Christian music, all the churches would support you and have a shitload of business and eat it like that. He said, well, that's fine what you think, but this is what we've decided. Well, let me tell you something. In the last 25 years, when we had the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and we had the outpouring of Oprah, the church had a choice to become the most powerful thing on the planet or to depend on the power within themselves. And we have now proven ourselves a bunch of cowards, a bunch of impotent, wasted wimps who think things like, if I have a business and there's too much Jesus, God won't bless it. 
Well, this is the world. 